Today's top stories. The Transportation Department vows to push for emergency powers to solve Metro Manila's traffic issues. The BNP warns parents and teachers against the online MoMo challenge targeting children. Farmers in Ilocos Norte prepare for a prolonged dry spell. And coach Yang Yao wants Jordan Clarkson and Andre Blatch to play together in the FIBA World Cup. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Transportation, or DOT, will pursue gaining emergency powers to ease the country's traffic problems. This means taking control of funds and mechanisms to reform the traffic system. More on this from Ram Dulfo. The Transportation Department will continue to push for the granting by Congress of emergency powers to address the country's traffic situation. This even if President Duterte gave up on asking for emergency powers to solve EDSA's traffic due to the distrust of lawmakers amid suspicion of corruption. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade echoed the President's sentiment that having emergency powers is part of a basket of solutions, part of which is the modernization of the MRT, LRT, and public utility vehicles. The President said the granting of emergency powers is necessary for the government to spend funds for the implementation of various transportation projects to alleviate the impact of the current traffic situation. Tugade said the department will continue to seek the enactment of a law granting emergency powers after Congress convenes its session following the midterm elections in May. However, he acknowledges that asking for emergency powers will not be enough if lawmakers will insist on delaying the process. The Traffic Crisis Act, which is pending before the Congress, will designate the Transportation Secretary as Traffic Chief who shall take over land transportation agencies including the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA, the proposed Metropolitan Cebu Traffic Coordinating Council and the proposed Davao Administrator. The Traffic Chief shall have the power to harmonize and enforce all traffic rules and regulations to implement a unified traffic system. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufo. A group is calling on the government to hold National Democratic Front of the Philippines Chief Negotiator Fidel Agkawili accountable for the criminal acts of communist rebels in the country. The No to Communist Terrorist Group Coalition pointed out that Agkawili handles the National Union of People's Lawyers, which stands as legal counsel of the communist terrorist group. The group said Agkawili used the NUPL as the shield of the party against complaints of human rights abuses and other legal complaints. It said despite President Duterte's go signal allowing Agkawili to return to the country, he must not escape his accountabilities from being part in criminal acts done by the rebels. President Duterte hinted about the possible resumption of peace talks between the government and the communist rebels following its suspension in 2017. The PNP is investigating the possible link between the cocaine blocks worth about 110 kilos discovered in the country's eastern seaboard and a large shipment of cocaine seized by Australian police last year. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde said authorities recovered over 500 kilos of cocaine headed for Australia near Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands last July and September. The cocaine blocks allegedly contain markings similar to those that have been found so far in the country. Alvayalda said the blocks were either deliberately disposed for later recovery or lost after the vessel transporting them sunk at sea. They are now waiting for the results of the chemical tests based on samples sent to Australia and the United States. The government is drafting a plan to go after smugglers of fuel products in the country. Finance Assistant Secretary Tony Lambino made the announcement with the introduction of the Fuel Marking Program, which aims to collect the right taxes from the oil industry. During the economic briefing in Malacanang, Lambino said they will strictly implement and monitor the program. Trial testing on local fuel is ongoing in cooperation with the Department of Energy along with the training of inspectors. About 44 billion pesos in taxes are reportedly lost due to oil smuggling. President Duterte visits the wake of the late Banco Central Governor Nestor Espinilla Jr. and the PNP offers to tighten security for priests and bishops. 
More on these and other news around the Metro from Benj Bondok. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte on Tuesday visited family members of Banco Central ng Pilipinas Governor Nestor Espinilla Jr. who passed away on February 23. Duterte paid his last respects to Espinilla at the Arlington Chapel at Eternum Heritage Park. The President appointed Espinilla as BSP Governor in July 2017. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and local government is waiting for the release of the narco list that will inform voters about politicians involved in illegal drugs. DILG Undersecretary Martin Dino hopes that these officials, especially those running in this year's elections, would be charged. The DILG has a list of LGUs that don't have barangay anti-drug councils, while the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is verifying the narco list. In other news, the Philippine National Police says it is ready to provide security for priests and bishops who would ask for protection. This after Caloocan Bishop Virgilio David expressed fear for his life amid reports of supposed threats against priests opposing the government's war on drugs. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde said they have discussed the issue with Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, but the bishop reportedly refused the PNP's offer. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Still to come, the PNP warns parents and teachers against the online Momo Challenge targeting children. Farmers in Ilocos Norte prepare for a prolonged dry spell. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. The universal health care law that I signed today will guarantee equitable access to quality and affordable health care services for all Filipinos. Senator JV, kayo po yung major sponsor ng universal health care law. Uh, ano bang contribution nito sa ating uh, current healthcare system? Well, actually, it will be an enhancement of the Philhet Law. Uh, Unang-una, uh, it is now signed by the President. Ibig sabihin, hindi na 80%, hindi na 90% ang coverage ng Philhet. No? It will now be 100%. Ibig sabihin, basta Pilipino ka, automatic, you will now be a member of Philhet and covered by the National Health Insurance. So, yan ang pinaka- Magandang balita, lahat ng Pilipino ay covered na ngayon ng Philhealth. Secretary Duque, ano po ba yung advantage itong universal health care law? Sa ilalim po ng universal health care law, uh, palalawigin na natin ngayon ang uh, servisyo uh, para sa pangunahin uh, yung servisyo ng uh, pangkalusugan, primary health care. Ito ang thrust sa ilalim ng atin na uh, UHC. At dito ang makikinabang ang mga kababayan natin mga mahihirap sa mga kanayunan sa mga uh, komunidad ng atin indigenous peoples, yung atin mga upland barangays at mga libliban na mga lugar na halos hindi talaga nakakatikim ng uh, Uh, gamot o ng uh, doktor o mga health professionals ang ating mga mahihirap na mga kababayan. Sa universal health care na talaga naman pinakita ni Pangulong Duterte yung kanyang tinatawag natin sheer political will that this bill will finally be enacted into law precisely to address the gaps in service delivery for our people, especially the poor and who are at the fringes of society. The PNP cited the case of Cleb Jasper Santos, an 11-year-old student who committed suicide in school after following a suicide game online. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde said parents should monitor the online activity of children to prevent them from assessing these suicide games. Meanwhile, teachers can report whether students are showing signs of suicidal tendencies. 
The PNP had launched the first Philippine Internet Crimes Against Children Center, a joint project with the National Bureau of Investigation, Australian Federal Police, United Kingdom National Crime Agency, and International Justice Mission. Ride-sharing firm Grab Philippines launched on Wednesday a shooting simulator for the PNP Highway Patrol Group to help enhance its capability to enforce road safety and security. The trooper shooting simulator is aimed at giving up-to-date training and on responding on threats from criminals on the streets. Grab Philippines President Brian Ku said the simulator will provide personnel with a sense of split-second judgment when responding to threats that cannot be provided by training from normal shooting ranges. Ku said equipping troopers with the right training and equipment will help curb incidents of robbery, assault, and carnapping. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde, meanwhile, said the shooting simulator will help enhance the capability of the police on its campaign against criminality amid its preparations for the upcoming midterm elections in May. The country's office property market is seen to continue to benefit from the presence of Philippine offshore gaming and outsourcing or POGO sector. Real estate service firm KMC Saville said the POGO sector is able to make an incredible return on money for a short period of time. Managing Director Michael McCullough noted gaming and outsourcing firms continue to take up a large amount of office space, particularly in the Bay Area, Quezon City, Cebu, and Clark. He said the business process outsourcing and knowledge process outsourcing sector, as well as the multinationals, will continue driving demand for office spaces in BTC. Meanwhile, overall average rent in Metro Manila accelerated further, hitting 5% year-on-year at the end of 2018. McCullough added that residential and land prices in all CBDs are still expected to increase. Residents in Ilocos Norte are bracing for the effects of the dry spell, with farmers even adjusting their planting calendars. Several farmers' groups have also decided to diversify their crops to mitigate the impact of prolonged drought. Farmers underwent a 10-day Climate Smart Farm Business School training in San Fernando City, Pampanga, which taught proper planning and crop diversification. The move involves planting smart crop varieties, which are resistant to drought. Bagasa said the dry spell could extend up to June, which may probably affect the productivity of farmers. The Department of Agriculture boosts technological aid to corn farmers in central Visayas. Meanwhile, the Bulacan Provincial Government opens trainings for Sangguniang Kabataan officials to become better public servants. More on this and other stories from the provinces from Chani Skate. The Department of Agriculture in Central Visayas continues to strengthen the mechanization program for corn farmers in Cebu. Around 30 farmers attended last week a skills training on the proper operation, maintenance, and troubleshooting of the compact corn mill. The training capacitates beneficiaries to fully use the machine granted to them by the government. Mechanization of Corn Farmer Associations is one of DA's project interventions to empower them and further enhance their farming skills and exposure to post-harvest technology. Meanwhile, the provincial government of Bulacan is giving training courses to Sangguniang Kabataan to help them become better leaders. Governor Wilhelmino C. Alvarado signed an agreement with International Youth Fellowship Philippines President Kyung Hyun Nam for projects regarding youth development. Dr. Gyu Yun Cho, Regional Director of the International Mind Education Institute, also gave lectures about bringing change and being a youth leader with a heart. Alvarado urged youth leaders to strengthen their leadership skills and use them for the community. In other news, the province of Bikidnon paid its respects to former Governor Carlos Fortich, who passed away on February 24 at the age of 83. Fortich's daughter, Carla, confirmed the former governor's death on Tuesday. The remains of the six-time governor will arrive at the capital on March 4 and will remain at the capital overnight for public viewing. His remains will be buried on March 6 at Shepherd's Meadow Memorial Park in Sumpong, Malaybalay City. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, 
The U.S. Library of Congress is set to archive news from the Philippine News Agency on the 2019 elections. Coach Yang Gia wants Jordan Clarkson and Andre Blatch to play together in the FIBA World Cup. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Ang tigdas. Ang tigdas ay isang nakakahawang sakit na karaniwang nakakaapekto sa mga bata. Ang sakit na ito ay dulot ng measles virus na kumakalat sa hangin. Pag hindi naagapan ang tigdas, maaaring magdulot ito ng mga komplikasyon na nakamamatay. Ano-ano ang mga sintomas ng tigdas? Lagnat na may mapupulang pantal o rashes, pamumula ng mata, ubo, sipon, pananakit ng katawan, panghihina at kawalan ng ganang kumain. Abangan ang mga bakunador o magpabakuna na sa pinakamalapit na health centers o vaccination post para makaiwas sa tigdas at iba pang sakit. Ang tigdas ay hindi basta-bastang pantalang. Ito'y mapanganib at nakamamatay. Kaya pabakunahan na ang inyong mga anak. Ito'y isang mensahe mula sa Presidential Communications Operations Office at Department of Health. We will make a few years the golden age of infrastructure in the Philippines. In other words, we are going to build, build and build. News content from state-run Philippine News Agency on the upcoming 2019 national and local elections would soon be part of a special collection at the United States Library of the Congress. The library will collect and archive the PNA's coverage of the midterm elections on May 13. Websites are selected for archiving to represent samples of web content that could help document an event and record information that could otherwise be lost. In the case of the PNA, the Library of Congress will not only archive its URL but also public content that the agency links to on social media and other third-party sites. The collection will be made available to the public a year after its archiving has been completed. And in our foreign news, the China Public Diplomacy Association formally opened in Beijing its annual training program for media members from countries in the Asia Pacific and Africa. 49 journalists from the two regions were selected to undergo a 10-month training program. Participants will study China's politics, economy, diplomacy, history, society and culture as well as primary Chinese courses. China Asia Pacific Press Center Director Yu Lei said the program aims to provide journalists from other countries a comprehensive and in-depth understanding of China. Yu added that the Chinese government values the role of media in strengthening people-to-people -people connection between China and other parts of the world. The Philippines has participated in this program since 2017, represented by reporters from the Philippine News Agency and the Presidential Communications Operations Office, or the PCOO. And in sports, Gilas Pilipinas coach Yang Giao is hoping to have both Jordan Clarkson and Andre Blatch playing for the 2019 FIBA World Cup. Giao says, Gilas playing with Clarkson and Blatch would be the country's version of a dream team. The Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas has appealed before FIBA's eligibility committee to relax its passport rule on Clarkson and other Filipino players of mixed parentage. Giao said he is also looking on to see Stanley Pringle to play with the national team as a local rather than a naturalized player. Giao took over the Gilas program in the aftermath of the July 2 brawl with Australia. His contract only runs until the end of the qualifiers and he is leaving it up to the top officials to form a strategy for the game set from August 31st to September 15 
in China. Rehabilitation efforts continue in Marawi City as the government reaches out to affected residents. In the city shelters, the DSWD has resumed distribution of food packs and other supplies. Sweet Lukman from the PIA has this story. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has continued to provide relief assistance to the families affected by Marawi siege, which happened almost two years ago. Two family food packs were distributed to each family currently residing in transitory shelters and evacuation sites in the city, particularly those in the Lakeview Shelter in Barangay Boganga, Titanic Building in Lanao del Sur, Provincial Capital, Bitubwadi Itoa Evacuation Center and Bahay Pag-asa 1, Bahay Pag-asa 2 in Barangay Mipaga, Sarimanok 10 City and Biyaya ng Pagbabago Transitional Shelter Site in Barangay Sagunsongan. Fatima Manardas, a former resident of Barangay Sabala, Manao 1, is now residing in Bito Buadi Itoa Evacuation Center, expressed her gratitude for receiving food packs from DSWD. Masaya po kami, nabigyan kami. Salamat po sa DSWD kasi binigyan kami ng relief. According to DSWD 10, Ramiel Ginandam, Ang DSWD po ay masaya na maibahagi ang relief uh, goods natin dito sa Marawi City sa anim na barangay na pinagkalooban po ng family food packs. Kami po ay patuloy na sumusuporta sa inyong pangangailangan hanggang sa abot na makakaya namin para matulungan kayo. DSWD conducted the distribution with the help from the Joint Task Group Tabang of the Philippine Army. Lieutenant Colonel Andres Soriano, commander of the 12th Civil Military Operations Battalion, also urged the IDPs to utilize the food packs in the right way. So, ang role po ng uh, Task Force Tabang sa Task Force Bangon is i-assist yung Task Force uh, Bangon para sa mga relief uh, distribution. Ina-assist po natin yung ibang mga uh, agencies para mas mapadali yung kanilang uh, gawain. Meanwhile, Mary Joy Huson, Executive Assistant of the TFBM Field Office Manager, reiterated that TFBM would continuously provide support to the IDPs. Ang Task Force Bangon Marawi ay nag naninigurado na hindi po kayo iwanan ng gobyerno. Nandito po ang lahat na insya na bumubuo ng Task Force Bangon Marawi. Nagawin po namin lahat ng ating makakaya para po sa paragdalagang support para sa mga taong uh, nasa lanta sa uh, gera dito sa Marawi. Asahan niyo po na palagi po kaming andito. Susuportahan po namin kayo. Sleeping kits, hygiene kits, drinking kits, and family kits were also distributed to the affected residents in Barangay Mipaga, Barangay Timbalangan, and Barangay East Caloocan, Marawi City. Together with Lou Antonio, for PNA Newsroom, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. And here's another look at today's biggest stories. The Transportation Department vows to push for emergency powers to solve Metro Manila's traffic issues. The BNP warns parents and teachers against the online MoMo challenge targeting children. Farmers in Ilocos Norte prepare for a prolonged dry spell. And coach Yang Giao wants Jordan Clarkson and Andre Blatch to play together in the FIBA World Cup. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.